Hi, I'm Anish Popat and we're here today with Guitard. We're going to be making a chai tea ganache with sole d'or and we're going to be shelling it with musique foncée. I'm going to be making a chai tea ganache, uh, one of my favourite drinks of all time. Really warming, um, really gets the soul and gives it a good hug. So I'm using some of my favourite spices. So I've got lovely cardamom here. Cardamom is hard to describe, people say it's very zesty and fresh. Uh, I just think it tastes magical. Um, we've also got nutmeg, cinnamon and some ginger. So to be a little bit different, I'm going to make my ganache straight in the kilna jar. So the first thing to do is make a real proper Indian tea. And there's only one way to do that, and that's with a rolling boil. I've got 170 ml of water here. And I've got an equal amount of milk. So you can see by using water and milk rather than cream and butter, we're going to get this really light ganache. Okay. And since we're going to be pairing with chocolate, we want to make the tea slightly stronger than we otherwise would. So we've got a couple of bags going in there. We're just going to get that working its magic. There we are. So I've got my ground ginger. In India, we don't really measure. So this is all done from the heart. Get in there. Good amount of spice because we want it to stand up against the chocolate as well. I've got the cinnamon. The nutmeg we go a little bit lighter on. Um, I think I read somewhere it's the fifth most poisonous ingredient so it can put you to sleep. So we go easy on that one and of course lots and lots of lovely cardamom. We've just broken these up slightly and we're just going to get it straight in the milk. Now the one thing that happens different with Indian tea is we get a rolling boil so as soon as that starts to climb up the pan we're going to let that simmer and really brew to get a really strong tea. And we're just going to go in with uh, our sugar here. We've got 110 grams of sugar. Um, I like the darker sugars because they give this lovely caramelly sort of flavour. And also it's not overly too sweet. So if we just have a look in here, we can see the spices are really coming through into the, into the milk and we're getting that lovely chai tea colour developing there. Okay, so keep an eye guys. This is the, this is the magic. This is the moment. Here we go for the rolling boil. And this is what really gives the Indian tea its, its amazing flavour. There, we're just going to bring that down a bit and keep it on that simmer for a moment. So I've just uh, put my chai tea into this jug here, just sieved it out to get rid of the uh, cardamom pods. And I'm going to top it up with uh, some extra cardamom just because I think cardamom is wonderful. And that's going to go straight over our chocolate. And I'm just going to hand blend that to create the emulsion. So one thing we often see is tempering chocolate, but what I'm going to do is temper the ganache. So I'm going to pour the ganache straight onto our marble. And we're going to work the ganache. We're going to try and crystallise the ganache. And what we're doing, in the same way as tempering, we're going to use movement to agitate the crystals within the ganache. And this will help us uh, form the structure we need to help pipe our ganache. So I'm just going to move um, our ganache across the table, back and forth. And every time you stroke the ganache, you're forcing more and more crystals to, to form. If you've noticed so far, I've not used any thermometers. We've been given one by nature, and that's our bottom lip. So if you touch a chocolate, just your bottom lip, and it's just cooler than your body temperature, your chocolate is tempered. So no need to carry all those fancy gadgets with you. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 100 grams of tempered chocolate in to this ganache, just to help it set up a bit better. So here's my tempered chocolate. I'm just going to add that to the ganache. So I'm just going to get this straight into the bowl. And you want to use fast movements, otherwise it goes all the way down the table. Never good. And don't worry about leaving a little bit out, because we're going to go straight back onto the marble table again with the, with the chocolate as well. OK. So add in our tempered chocolate. And we're just going to mix that in. And then straight away that will start to firm up our ganache a bit more as well. Fabulous. So we've got this ganache now much thicker consistency. We're going to get that straight back out. And we're nearly there. You can see the ganache is nicely thickened up. And it's nearly holding shape. So just back and forth a few more times just to get those crystals doing their bit. Okay, so I've just taken the ganache to a consistency where it just holds its shape 
So when we pipe it, we can keep that shape. And it's really important because we want to create certain ripples and ridges when we pipe so that when the chocolate falls off of it, it leaves these lovely contrasting uh, colours. And this will go straight into a piping bag. There we are. So I've got a lid from a bottle with a flat base to create some discs. Now the reason we're doing this is because our ganache is so soft, if we were to dip it directly into the chocolate and use a fork, it would go straight through the ganache um, and it wouldn't create that lovely finish we want. So we're just going to use, just cover the bottom of our lid and just make a disc. And we'll repeat that again. And you don't want to make them too thick. It's okay to make them slightly thin. Because we still want that lovely eating experience, that nice thin shell all around. So now our discs have set up nicely and we've got our ganache here, which we're just going to pipe straight onto our discs. Uh, the best way to do this is just hold the uh, nozzle just above, about two centimeters above the disc. And you keep piping from there and you create those lovely ruffles. And you want to pipe so that the ruffles just come over the edge of the disc. So you get a nice round protrusion and then you lift up. And we're just going to go ahead and pipe up the rest. Don't worry to go over the edge. Better to do that than not. Otherwise, you don't get that right dome shape. And I just think those ruffles are wonderful. Now that we've piped our chocolates, we're going to leave them for about 15 to 20 minutes just to crystallize, which will give them enough strength and structure for us to dip them into our chocolate. So our chocolates have now crystallized and we're just going to take them off of the acetate so you can take them off because the chocolate is set nicely and one by one we're going to submerge them into chocolate and the best way to dip chocolates is to put them in and dip them right upside down, submerge them completely in and we put them out like this. Now what we want to create is a really thin shell so the best way to do that is keep dipping it within the chocolate itself. And by doing that, the viscosity of the chocolate that's in the bowl pulls off all the excess chocolate from our confection. And we continue doing it. So we dip it full way, then halfway, then a third, and then we keep dipping it. And as you can see, we can see those lovely ridges, lighter color coming through. And we just swipe on the edge there and we place down. There we go. In all the way, halfway, a third, a quarter, and just keep dipping to get rid of all the excess chocolate. And you can see that lovely, Taj Mahal dome shape appearing at the top there. I'm just going to get a couple of swipes to get rid of that extra chocolate. So here we are 10 minutes later with our lovely set ganaches. And as you can see, we've got that lovely shine from the tempered chocolate. So this is a, a nod to Etienne Guitard, the founder of Guitard Chocolate. He set up his chocolate company during the gold rush in San Francisco. And of course, smart guy he was, he sticked with chocolate. So I've got some cocoa butter here with some gold luster powder. I'm using a pastry brush and the indent on my knuckle here just to flick speckles onto our chocolates so we'll get some gold splatters coming onto our chocolates there. So the best thing about making chocolate is of course the eating and we've got that lovely bittersweet music fonce and on the inside Soleil d'Or, that lovely cinnamony caramelly chocolate with of course our black tea, cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger and cardamom. Mmm. And that water ganache melts on your palate, opens up all those flavors, delicious.